Okay guys, so today we are going to be talking about a knife that I previously had. Of course, this isn't the exact one, but a similar. And today we're going to be redoing my review on the Bark River Knives Aurora. Now I wanted to revisit this knife um, for one primary reason, and that is because I got this knife originally a handful of years, like three or four years ago, and I didn't really like it back then. But now I've kind of changed up my woodsmanship and bushcrafting skills, so hopefully I can bring some new insights to this knife. After all, a lot of people do seem to really like it, and it seems like a very capable knife. But let's jump into the tabletop review on this knife. And before we do that, as always, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so that you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Now, let's jump into it. Okay, guys, so like I said, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bark River Knives Aurora and overall what I think about this awesome little blade. And uh, when I got it back, so originally my first one, the reason why I didn't like it was because uh, the tip and on all Auroras, as you guys can see here, uh, the tip is really thin. So that makes the knife a little bit more fragile and a little bit easier to snap off. And that's exactly what I did with this knife. Now, some people will contest that, you know, knives should be able to take some, withstand some light prying tasks on their tips without failing. And of course, that's what I tried to do. I tried to make a netting needle with this knife. And of course, I snapped the tip off of it. So that was the reason why I ended up disliking this knife and going to something completely different. So that... <coughs> So that being said though, this knife still does have a lot of great properties and it is really a pretty excellent knife for bushcrafting, I will say, if you disregard the weak tip that this knife can possess or does possess. So aside from that, and I'm gonna roll in of course as my usual, I'm gonna roll in some footage here of the use on this thing. I did a little bit of fire starting, batoning, and feather sticking for you guys. So, so you guys can kind of get an idea of how it works. I will say, as far as the overall use on this goes, I've been using it for a handful of months now, again, on top of what I already did. And as my greater experience has led me to, once again, if you don't do anything too bad, too bad with the tip, uh, the knife is actually very tough. You can really pound on this thing when you baton it. It is really great at just being smacked and smacked and smacked on the back. Now, of course, uh, its spine is, of course, full tang, and it is 0.18. Now, I do want to make the distinction that this is not the lightweight Aurora. Uh, this is the full heavyweight Aurora, I guess, like heavyweight. They're really not that different as far as, like, this knife, in my opinion, is still a very lightweight knife. But the lightweight Aurora, Auroras, they have a thinner spine. So this is the 0.18 normal stock Aurora. And overall, I have no issues with uh, any type of batoning. It's very tough, very robust. Even, I will give kudos to the tip, even when you hit the tip with a baton, uh, it still works just fine. The tip doesn't break off or anything. And as far as it goes, the grind on this, just like most Bark River knives, is a convex grind. And it's actually been a little while since I've had a convex grind in the blade kind of lineup. And I've kind of forgotten just how well they perform. But this convex grind does a very good job at cutting. I will say, just like I've said in the past with convex grinds, uh, the one thing you just have to watch with them is they love to bite deep into wood. And because it has this convex grind, it just wants to slip right into the grain of wood. So uh, that means that you can carve and cut really deep, really fast with a convex grind but you do have to control yourself if you want to not cut as deep. So that is a quick note as far as the grind goes, but it is a really good grind. Um, the A2 retention that I found on this knife seems to be on par with all the other A2s, maybe a little bit less than um, one A2, which is the one, or the A2 treated by, um, by Allegheny Knife Works. Uh, Allegheny, they put a very high, like 62 Rockwell on their A2, so it's a very hard steel, but it works pretty well, and um, 
yeah, this isn't quite that level, so it will get dull just a little bit faster than that. But still, I've been using it quite a bit and haven't really been working with this edge much and haven't noticed anything as far as this, or any real lack of sharpness. Uh, as far as the stainlessness goes, it's definitely more stainless than something like O1. Uh, A2 is pretty good at not getting rust on it, though, however, if you do let it rust up, it will. Then next to that, the fire striking capabilities. I also did roll this into the testing, but um, Bark River Knives has always been what I would consider okay at striking off the back. It can definitely throw sparks off of the back of it, but because uh, Bark River's owner, Mike, he doesn't believe in putting a full 90 on the backs of the blades. Uh, he puts a kind of, he puts a 90 and then kind of dulls the edges so that you don't cut yourself when your thumb is up here. Some people like that. I don't really find it an issue because I used a lot of things like LT Wright knives, uh, my more Garber um, battle horse knives, and they all had true 90 just flat ground backs. And I never found myself um, like cutting my thumb up right here and even after they'd been used a little bit. So I don't personally buy into that, but that's Mike's choice. So that's what he does with the blades. Anyways, as you guys can see here, definitely by a little bit of wear. Um, this knife has seen a good amount of striking and it definitely takes a few strikes to get a fire going as I've shown in the video. You're not just gonna do one strike with this. It doesn't really release, or when you strike, it doesn't necessarily strike out enough sparks to do a one strike fire. So that kind of sucks, but once again, you can strike off the back of it, so that is a plus. Now with the traction, I do want to note, uh, in my per previous review, I got the laminated wood, and I quickly learned that with different with Bark River knives, there's different kind of types of Bark River knives. There's more of the showy, decorative, handled knives, and then there's more of the real users. And so on my Bushcrafter and on this one, I have, I got micarta because I found on my bushcrafter that the micarta, even though it does have a layer of laminate over the micarta, it still is pretty traction-y. It has a good amount of grip to it. And even when my hands are wet, I do feel like this holds my hand secure enough. I don't feel like I'm gonna lose purchase. Now I will say with my original Aurora, I got it in Bocot wood and uh, that laminated wood that they did, while very beautiful, was extraordinarily slip or slippery, especially when wet, it offered no traction. In fact, there were many times when I was half tempted to just sand down the handles to get rid of this uh, layer of laminate. But I ended up not doing that and just living with it. And it was okay, but not the best. Now, getting back to this knife, um, the, the micarta is really great on this one. I still feel, just like with my Bushcrafter, I feel like I have a good amount of traction. My hand's not going to go anywhere. Uh, one thing I do always compliment uh, Bark River Knives on is their phenomenal ergonomics. They leave nothing desired in their ergonomics. As you guys can kind of see here, it has a modified Coke bottle shape to it that fits my hand perfectly. And what I like about this Aurora and what I liked about my original Aurora was the ergonomics are just stellar. And also what I like is that I have just a little bit of room right here at the back. I don't feel like my hands crowded in any type of you know, handheld position. I don't feel my hands crowded at all. So I have just enough room to feel comfortable and, you know, have my hands really find where they want to be without them all being bunched together or something. I can also kind of choke back on it if I want to. So it leaves some options there in a very, like I said, very comfortable grip. The, uh, <clears throat> the way they mated the steel tang to the handles, my carta is seamless. There's no tang sticking out. There's no handle sticking out. It looks really great and it feels really great. Like I said, I always have applauded um, Bark River for their handles and this one is no exception. Very nice handle to it. Um, now moving over to the sheath, I will say that this is another thing that I like. Now with my original Bark River, uh, and I actually forgot to pull the original sheath, but with that one, it was a really flimsy, kind of cheap leather. It was thin and the sheath really bent. So you guys can see here, sorry, you guys can see here, there's not really that much flex in this sheath. Obviously it's leather, so there's gonna be a little bit of flex, but there's not much flex in this one. There is a bunch of flex in the original, uh, 
the original Aurora sheath that I have and I really hated that. That was also part of what snapped the tip was because, you know, when you're walking through the woods and stuff, you, you bang around and sometimes, you know, you brush up against a tree and it likes to bend, you know, the sheath. And so what had happened was that at some point with my original Aurora, it had bent the sheath far enough to snap the tip. This one, I'm not that worried about that happening because this is a far stiffer uh, sheath and it's made out of thicker leather. So really do like that about this sheath. It's, this one's more like the Bushcrafter sheath that I had got and this sheath is a good solid sheath and it holds the blade just fine, no issues whatsoever. Holds a ferro rod, uh, no problems. And I got this little, just kind of flimsy, kind of cheap, but not super cheap ferro rod just sitting on here. Um, and this is just like a little, it says like Brunton on it, but it's just a little ferro rod and uh, it works well for this. And then I got a tiny little piece of shock cord here to sit on here so that it will not fall out because that is important. So anyways, that's the sheath. The retention is excellent. Of course, this does not shake out. It takes a nice firm pull to get it out. So excellent fitment on the sheath. I have no problems or concerns with this, with this particular sheath. Obviously it's leather, so bear that in mind. Um, but the overall blade is pretty good. Once again, this knife kind of leaves me torn because it's such an excellent performing knife. I just really wish that the tip was not so thin because it's one of those things that I'm concerned about breaking and you know this probably would not be a survival knife for me in all honesty just because of the thin and fragile tip because you can have a really thin tip like this but it needs to be made out of a really flexible steel something like 50 or 5160 which you know my buck thug is also has a really thin tip but it's made out of 5160 and have never had any tip breakage issues whatsoever so uh, that's about my only real complaint with this knife. Other than that, um, the knife performs really exceedingly well. It is a really awesome blade. I have to say I'm very impressed with it once again, and I do really like this guy. I uh, do expect to see it more throughout the summer. I think I'm gonna be making this my primary bushcrafting blade and uh, for rightful reasons, because it is a really nice, handy little blade and it works very well at doing its job. Anyways guys, enjoyed that quick look at the Bark River Knives Aurora, or maybe not so quick look at the Bark River Knives Aurora. I'm really enjoying the, revisiting this blade. It is still an awesome knife, and I really do like the knife. It's just, like I said, the one issue is the tip. But anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, quick look at the Aurora, and as always guys, God bless, and I'm out.